and welcome to another episode of On The Couch with Christine. And today I've got the fantastic Nathan Wright back with me again. Some of you might remember that he joined us for an interview a few months ago. So Nathan, how's um, everything going with Avenue Q in Melbourne? Look, um, we opened, what, about a week ago um, to a great reaction. Melbourne are really embracing it. Our previews were just sold out and we'd spent six weeks rehearsing a show that is so funny but after you know five weeks, you're just like, yeah, let's go, go, go. And it wasn't until we had got an audience in, we were like, ah, oh, that's it is right. funny. It is so funny, and they embraced it, and it just it's it's been going really, really well, and it's been a nice change because the show is so different, and the word on the street has been really great, and because I watch every single preview in a different seat to take notes, and I think about the sixth preview, I had the couple sitting next to me that had been two or three times. Oh wow! And we'd only been previewing for like five shows, so. Just get you excited thinking that a show, even though it's not, you know, open yet, and people that are already coming back a couple of times. Yeah. So, so just for people who might be watching this, you're in Melbourne. What theatre? Where can they see it in Melbourne? Comedy theatre, corner of Exhibition and Lonsdale Street. Um, so that's where it's playing. It's there till beginning of August. Great. Yeah. Now I wanted to ask you. Last time you were here, you were just starting because uh, Nathan choreographed Avenue Q here in Australia. And you hadn't started choreographing yet. So, what's how was it choreographing a show where you had to choreograph for puppets as well as people? Well, um, <laughs> well because I have never choreographed for puppets ever. Just, just, just old-fashioned humans. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Um, and so, about six months ago, after the auditions, um, our puppet consultant from Melbourne, her name is Sue Giles, and she has an amazing puppet company called Polyglot. So I met her during the audition round and she was there to give us advice on how the puppets should be operated, how they should be manipulated. And because Avenue Q, we're not trying to hide the puppeteers, the puppet is just on the arm and you still keep the full visual of the human being, we're not trying to hide it. Right. Like on Sesame Street, we actually don't see the manipulation done, it's just, you know, the yeah, puppets. Yes, puppet. um, So we met then and probably back in January this year, while I was in Melbourne working, on my day off I would go spend an afternoon at the Polyglot Theatre with all these amazing puppeteers and go, so, <laughs> how do I make puppets, you know, look like they've been choreographed? Um, so was it hard to have the puppet doing what you wanted the puppet to do, yeah. but have the human body looking good doing what the human body was doing? So the general rule is, because the puppet only comes to the waist, from the waist down is the human, so anything that I wanted the puppets to do choreographically, yeah. with their legs, I controlled, and the puppet from the waist up was all done by the puppet. But all the reaction... Was what, sorry? It's all done by the puppet. Right. So if you were doing like a top, But did you have to choreograph what the puppet was doing? Yes, everything. Wow. From every reaction, from start to finish. And there's 20 numbers in the show and people see the show and it probably doesn't look like it's so heavily choreographed because I didn't want it to look like that. I wanted it to look like mm. an episode of Sesame Street. Yeah. Um, but, um... So learning how to manipulate the puppet, getting the eye line right of the puppet, <laughs> getting the person's face to send their reaction through the puppet, mm. and then getting them to move at the same time. Plus move rods, be here on this count, now do a circle, now let's make the puppet do this. Yeah. You know. So you know how they say, they say never, never work with animals and children. Yeah. <laughs> so is it like, does that go for puppets? Never work with animal children but I think and one puppets. Thing, <laughs> you know, one thing with puppets is they definitely, they don't speak back. So, <laughs> Um, what about Trekkie Monster? Have you had any trouble with him? Uh, look, Trekkie Monster is becoming a bit of a rock star. Is he? Avenue Q. He's, he's very popular, especially with the ladies. Because when you first see him, he pops out of a window and he throws garbage out and you automatically have that connection of... I do have, know, a bit of a crush on, I have a bit of a crush on Trekkie Monster, so I'm hoping when I go to Melbourne that I'll be able to meet Trekkie Monster. Well, I, think that could, I think that could be arranged. And Trekkie Monster isn't you know, too shy. When it comes and he to likes things. the girls, I believe, he does. Trekkie Monster. He likes, a, he likes a lot of things, you know, especially <laughs> Yes, he does. Um, but yeah, so when it came to putting the show together, I would, every morning before we'd even start rehearsals, we'd start with a bit of a physical and a vocal, and then I would spend an hour with the cast and with the puppeteer, and we would just do exercises. So I would say, okay, let's skip in a circle. Okay, so how would the puppet skip in a circle? And it's all about the puppet leading the human, not da 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 da, and the puppet's all the way back back here. It's right. about the puppet always being the focus. And then you've got numbers where there's three puppets, but then there's three humans. Mm. So it's about integrating it all. So it just looks like yeah, it's just you know. So now that the now that the show is up and running, yeah. what is your role? Like you were the choreographer. Mm -hmm. So what is your role now in the show? 
So I stay as choreographer and once you know the director leaves and I leave, we leave after opening. Right. And there's a new resident director then stays with the show that learnt it. Is there a dance captain as such? There is a dance captain, Leah Howard. Oh, who, fantastic. Who is the once a week Gary Coleman. She looks after the show choreographically. That will sound so funny to people who haven't seen the show. Once a week she's Gary Coleman. Yeah, and indeed she is, but if you see the show you'll understand. <laughs> yes. So carry on. <laughs> um, so she looks after the show and she'll watch the show about two or three times a week. Yeah. And you know, if someone goes off and they haven't been on, she will rehearse them and rehearse them with the cast on stage and and liaise with stage management to make sure everyone knows what they're doing and she'll call me if there's any major right. catastrophe, which she hasn't. Touch <laughs> um, so, <laughs> But yeah, so I have all so faith in Leah. I have to ask, what has been your funniest um, moment in the you know, in Avenue Q, whether it be something that happened on stage or in rehearsals? I th like, there's been a few. I think some of the funniest things were just creating a reaction that a puppet can do that, even though you think it's just a puppet, some of the reactions they can do are, are so hysterical. Yeah. And you do it and you're like, oh my God, that looks so wonderful. Yeah. But I think probably the funniest things were, and I don't know, you know, how full on it can be, but in one part of the show, two puppets get intimate, yes. shall we say, <laughs> yes. and I think creating that and putting it together and just seeing puppets with not much on, I think it was probably, yeah. you know, one of the highlights of, yeah. you know, every day it was quite a joy to watch. You know, I'm sure it was. You know, <laughs> it was. The things you can do with puppets. Yeah. So yes. It is hilarious really Avenue Q, I have seen it twice myself mm. um, overseas, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you do see it, which brings me to my final question. Yeah. When is, being that I'm sitting here in Sydney, when is Avenue Q going to be joining us in Sydney? We finish in Melbourne beginning of August and we hit Sydney, I think, like the second week of August. And where are um, you going to be? Theatre Royal, yep. King Street. Yeah. Um, and we're there for a couple of months and I don't know, it's, I think it's such a great show for people to see, especially young people, even though the show is definitely not for children in any way. Yes, but, it's not for children. But I think for a teenage market and for I think teenage people in the industry I think it offers such a broad mm. thing to see we get to see great talented people but you get yeah. to see them manipulate puppets so it just goes to show yeah. all and the people a, in our show were not puppeteers they all had to learn yeah. so that's and it's a real comment on life I think the show itself is a real commentary on life it's it's, it's all about now it is about you yeah know, what everyone goes through in life, whether you're real or not, yes. puppet or human, yeah. everything in life is only for now and so just embrace it and enjoy it and and I think that's the best thing about our show, regardless of everything that happens in the show and everyone laughs and there's a real heart to Avenue Q. There and is. Yeah, there's a real I message. There is a real message and yeah. it's, a, it's, the, it's one of the first times that a, an American show has been brought to Australia and the producers have, have been able to employ complete Australian creatives. It's not like they've brought the show over and all the creatives that originally put the show on have been brought Just in here. case people don't know, what do you mean by creatives? Right, so um, in a creative production of any kind of show, whether it's your director, the choreographer, the musical director, the designer, the lighting designer, anything that creates the show is right. classed under a creative position. Yeah. Um, and normally like big shows that come out here, whether it's, you know, Wicked and Jersey Boys, you know, Mamma Mia, the big cult shows, which have been a massive success overseas when they come out here, most of the time, when you buy the show, the creative team are part of that and they will come out and they will set up the show and then leave it in, in the Australian right. residence. So whether it's a resident director, then a resident choreographer who will learn it off then. Mm. So it's the same production over the world. This is the first time ever that Avenue Q has been completely recreated by Australian creatives. So I think that's, I think that's really wonderful. And the lyricist, Jeff Marks, came out from Broadway to see the show and he absolutely loved it. Oh, and fantastic seeing his inside of how the show first started for him when it was an off-Broadway show and he was like, I've made it. I'm off-Broadway. He said, I never thought in 10 years I'd be here in Melbourne yeah. seeing the fourth production in the world being done in Australia and it's all been done by Australians. And he said, you've just, you've just got it so right. He said, so that was, that was really wonderful. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you.